You're listening to episode 103 of Lifestyle Locker Radio with John Galvani and me, Dr. Josh Hant. Hi, I'm Dr. Josh Hant, and welcome to Lifestyle Locker Radio, where we help you create an awesome life and lifestyle. From nutrition to fitness, mindfulness to peak performance, and relationships to money mindset, we bring you on an amazing journey to help you unleash your human potential. So here's a little bit about our guest today, John Galvani. He's a friend, he's an athletic trainer at Dominican College in New York, and this guy is a real true badass. He is retired Air Force as well, and in our journey as we go through this 50 mile course with you in this interview, you learn more and more about John. He's a really great guy. And just so you know, while we're recording, uh, we are at Dominican College, and you may hear other noises like a buzzer from a basketball game that's going on in the background. You may hear students coming in and out of the athletic training room, dropping keys on the counter, and I'm going to do my best to edit out a bunch of it. But listen, this was done while we were, or while he was at his job ready to take care of athletes so he was gracious enough to allow me to come and hang out and do this recording with him so without further ado enjoy the show So, so today's episode, as you meant, as you heard on the intro, is we're here at Dominican College, not because I'm going back to school, but because uh, I'm here with my buddy John, John Galvani, and uh, he's the guy who did the, the what do we do, the 50 mile star course go yeah. ruck together, 50 mile in 20 hour, yeah, so, standard, yeah, that was our 20 20 hour uh, cutoff time, so we completed it, and we wanted to kind of hash down and break down what we, you know, from training to nutrition to the event to the lead up to finishing to even, I'll even talk about the drive home for me and, <laughs> and the aftermath, which yeah. is pretty funny. So, John, I, you know, the whole audience knows I kind of went through my training um, and we didn't train with each other for the event, you know, yeah. our schedules are very different. So give us like just a, you know, give us like a two minute overview, three minute overview of what you did. Okay, a lot of the training for a thing like this that I try to do is it's got to be somewhat specific, somewhat general. The general part is overall strength. Good core strength because you got to carry a rucksack. And if you want to get your core strong, your abdomen, I hate the core term core, you want to get your midsection strong. It, it's so, so involved in everything you do. It's carry stuff. One of the mm-hmm. best ways is carrying a rucksack. And I've, I've been doing that since for probably close to 30 years. Yeah. I well, started doing it. Military. Oh, no, no, even yeah, military. But even before that, I used, I actually used to carry my chemistry biology textbooks. Yeah, because when I yeah I put in a backpack and I do a lot of hiking and I do that with folks and you know so you got 20, 30, 40 pounds in there and it's just added to the workload when you're hiking yeah. because I'm a faster hiker so you trying to slow yourself. down. I know down. you're a geeky guy, so you weren't reading these books. <laughs> <laughs> Not as much as I should. So, which is always a something you look back and say, man, I should have studied chemistry more. I should have understood it better. The bio part I was good at, which is what part of why I'm here, but yeah. the chemistry part. But yeah, but training is, you know, specific and non-specific. Very specific is getting strong enough to do the event. And that's a big thing. And see, I see a lot of people, I work with athletes. Mm-hmm. I work with a lot of good athletes. They're good at their sports, but their mobility sucks. Their strength sucks. Yeah, they're so specified, optimized to do in their exact sport, they can't do a lot of other things very well. But they're such good athletes, they get by with it. Mm. So they're not really optimized for, you know, to be human powered. And yeah, yeah, yeah. speaking, so yeah, no, really. there's a plug there. Um, so what is a lot of general strength stuff, which I've been doing a lot of work on there, especially as you get older. Now, in case you didn't know, Josh and I have an age difference. A little uh, bit, a couple yeah, of years. Josh is 39. I'm 59. So that's. Wow, that's yeah, that's a pretty good age difference. <laughs> so training is going to be is a bit different mm-hmm. uh, for me. At this age, strength you got to be strong. If you don't, as you get older, you're not going to be able to do things. So agreed, hundred percent. Yeah. So the for me, where we met in, in the CrossFit course, uh, 
uh, methodology. Very effective. Worked great for Josh for a while. Then he went out, you went out to other things. I've stayed yeah. in it and continued getting stronger and doing that. Yeah. So for me, the strength part, wasn't it? For me, it was getting back to the rucking, getting on the road. You have to toughen, you know, with an event like this, you have to toughen your feet. You have to toughen your, your joints, you know, the cartilage. You have to toughen the, the yeah. body in and of itself. And that's the key with just, and part of that is getting on the road. Yeah. Which it didn't do it early enough. And, yeah, I agreed. You know, we uh, did, I did, I did it for about 30 days was my, we'll say training, specific training for the event. And you probably weren't far off, right? Yeah, somewhere out there. And I was getting out a couple times a week. Uh, the course would be, you know, the longest I really did was about 10 miles. Yeah, I did. I did a 10 miler with uh, you. Yeah, 10, or yeah, nine we, inch yeah, or whatever yeah, we were, yeah, right, we were right there together. Then I'd done it with one of our other friends who unfortunately couldn't have done it, who'd have liked to, you know, a fast eight miles. Mike, come yeah. on, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he'll get there once he's, yeah, once he's all back, he'll get there. Uh, you know, and a lot of shorter stuff, but just getting the time, spending time under a bag, mm -hmm. uh, with the correct and even a little, a little bit more weight. You don't really have to go over heavy on the weight, but just, time it's like time under tension yeah you got to do it and just to build up endurance yeah totally the hardest thing for me with the training you know like strength i'm i'm not lifting as heavy as i was when i was in crossfit still lift still run still do a lot of high intensity stuff but yeah. the hardest and the craziest thing for me because we did a, one of these go rock challenges i think it was three years ago or four years yeah. ago and we did i think it was six hours it was like or 10 yeah. miles not even yeah right and wasn't terrible. I mean, we got beat up in the beginning a little differently, but carrying that rucksack for hours, holy cow. I mean, you don't realize it's, the pressure on your shoulders and every like holy it's crap. a whole it's a whole different world. Yeah. Uh it's like the Rocky the Rocky quote, you know, everybody has your your fight plan until you get punched in the face. Yeah. You're doing these, you, like you have that. a great plan to do it until you actually get under thirty pounds and it's not just again, that's part of the time factor. If you're not used to it, just in you're in your body to it, getting yeah. you know, getting your feet ready, your your joints used to the load, your tra your traps, your shoulders, yeah, just shoulders carrying. and traps. Holy cow! Still oh, thinking yeah. about it, that was like mine were red for like two days after. Yeah, the knots and that, and now you know, and your your equipment becomes you know, it's a big factor because does your equipment fit you correctly? Uh, like you saw the bag, I have a go ruck bag, but it's for that much distance is too big for me because I'm short. Yeah. For you, it would have been you could have you could have carried that bag and worked at it. Yeah. But so the bag I had I've had for a lot of years, but the shoulder straps are getting thinner now. So I had this I strapped on I, I had an add-on pad I found and I you know I had one and I I actually I knew I had the other one. I finally I found it. Yeah. Found the second one, but I had to rig a pad for the shoulder. For the other shoulder, yeah, just because that compression it was given, and you need, you need a certain amount of foam. It's not too soft. It's got to be just right. It's yeah, like, just like Goldilocks. Yeah, when you get that, it takes some of the load off. But you had a good, you know, you had a position carrying the bag that I never saw before, where you slipped it halfway down your shoulders. And yeah. it's like I never saw anybody do that one before. So that was new. Yeah, it, it worked actually very well. But changing position, just getting used to it. Yeah, uh, yeah. And the, the wild thing is, but people are like, wow, fifty miles. And I think you know, since my GPS watch died, I think. Based on one of the other teams, I think that we followed pretty similarly. We were probably closer to that 60-mile mark, especially yeah. with our little hiccup where we had, I think, three miles or two miles in one yeah. direction, then back, and then back again. Well, I did I did it off uh, with Google, and I measured it just from point to point that we were trying for at 52. That's not including the uh, the going back up, having go down and back up, and then the final from the Astoria Park to the end zone, not that's not including. I don't think it was including that. So that yeah. we did it. We were at about fifty-five. So yes, it, w it was probably closer to sixty. Yeah, and yeah. the walking. I'll tell you what, the walking for me was not that bad. I mean, my feet were a little achy. I know your feet got yeah. wet. My feet, my feet were actually dry, which was really good. But the the walking, like my legs weren't fatigued. Yeah, you know, I was like, I was pretty amazed that wow, fifty miles. Yeah, you could do fifty miles, and. and uh, but the tension and the positioning of the rucksack and, and you know, let's, we'll get, let's just, before we get too far into that, with us get the training, but the food and all of these things are huge, 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 huge. But before we do that, so yeah. John and I showed up at, we showed up, it was called I Can't Stadium in Randall's Island. And we both showed up, I don't know, like it was like four, six hours early or something, yeah. like yeah, before the event, like, thinking like, we'll, we'll rest in our cars, we'll prep, yeah. we'll, we'll take a nap. And uh, I was so amped up, man. I yeah. I could not go to sleep, and I was already up from seven a.m. that morning, or yeah. maybe even a little earlier. And I knew I was going to be up like 
Yeah. It, you know, if we, we did full 20 hours from 9 p.m., that would have been 5 p.m. the next day. Yes. So we were up for a long Yeah, we're, it was almost time. 48 hours. Yeah. Total time. Yeah. Uh, which, again, and that's, you know, when you're looking at events like this, short events like you do 5K, 10K, even something like a half marathon, you're, you know, you're going a couple hours and some, your body's kind of used to that. But this type and something like this, if you haven't done, if you haven't stayed up for 24 hours being active, it's, it's a whole different ball of wax when you go past that 36 or 48, your body starts going into a different kind of mode of operating. And if you haven't done it, it's very confusing for you physically and mentally. Yeah. Because your body wants to shut down because it's say, dude, I'm supposed to go to sleep now. What's going on? And you get, as long as you're moving, you can usually okay. But there's those periods when you might stop. Uh, and I've seen people, because of my other background, mm-hmm. they stop and lean against something. And next thing you know, it's like, dude, wake up. We got to take care of this, you know, whatever. They, they, Your body will go to sleep. Yeah. Uh, or just go into autonomic function where they're doing whatever you you can tell them they'll do it, but they're still half asleep and they yeah kind of, like zombie mode yeah zombie mode yeah and if you haven't done it it's it's really strange and it was have, really bizarre you have to part of it you have to if you train yourself for it, you can do it but there's also that upper limit of what you can do and I've done it where I've been up for seventy two and it's like I have people know you're gonna you know you're you're going down you're, sh- you're we're shutting you down you're done. Yeah. For me, like, you know, once we started and, and this was a, we'll get, I want to get into the, the, the sleep deprivation, if you will, in a second. But when we were showing, when we showed up, you know, we knew we were getting waypoints and stuff. And for those that really don't understand what that means was, I think there were, they said almost 200 people or maybe a little more that did this event with us. Yeah. They get everybody there. It's almost 9 PM. They start to go over the rules like at eight thirty, and like five minutes to nine, they hand out like a packet of paper, like four or five sheets of paper with rules and phone numbers just in case emergencies or you, you know, break a leg or whatever it is. But they also have 20 waypoints, meaning they, for us, it was 20 addresses in the, in the four boroughs. Yep. We just didn't do Staten Island because of, you know, we weren't doing a swim. Yeah. All right. Yeah, there. The Staten Island period, I don't know if it runs all night. <laughs> yeah. So we had 20 waypoints and it's not like a marathon or even an ultra marathon where they give you a course where you go, great, you can just follow these around. There'll be markers, there'll be people. This is at none of that. They give you this and you have your time starts at nine. So they give you this, these waypoints. And we had to sit in the back of my pickup truck or John's car, I remember whatever it was, with a flashlight over a map and our phones yeah. trying to go, which way do we go first? Yeah. And like, it's holy cow. Like it's, your brain has to do a lot of work on this event, not just your physical body. And that's part of the issue with this. Again, the, the people put this together is uh, basically they're all, retired military some of them are still active duty and they and they take uh, like a, a couple of days leave to do these events this is basically taken from the special forces selection course and like they give you the waypoints and they say we don't this is where you have to go to how you do it is up to you but sometimes they will tell you what the time limit is sometimes they don't tell you the time limit so you have to work on you have to use your brains it basically is brain and brawn because yeah. special forces want smart people yeah you can figure things out so i said your task and this is they call it task and standard. This is your task. This is a standard. You need to meet the standard or you don't complete the task. Task and standard is 20 waypoints. You can get there whatever way you want to as long as it's on your feet. Yeah, the mileage wasn't the point. Yeah. It was, if it takes you 48 miles or 65 miles exactly. or 100 miles, you have to finish it. Exactly. At a certain time. Yes. This, yeah. Then that's the standard. Standard is within, you have 20 hours to do it. From the time you, you know, it starts at nine o'clock, we give you the stuff then. So, how fast can you figure out a course? Do you take the extra minute, a few minutes to make sure it's an efficient course? Yeah. So you're not backtracking and doing everything. Yeah, I over thought again? we did a pretty good job at, you know, organization. Yeah. There's Granted, a couple, our mapping and everything sucked yeah, for us, you know, with our phones and my yeah. battery bricks dying. I think it's short circuit from all the rain. Yeah. And again, this is like after action, you know, when you think back, what would I do differently? You know, I would you know, get in a better map. I would get a better New York map. I had the subway map, <laughs> which was actually not too bad, but it's, and, you know, I'd want to I'd, yeah. I'd search around for a better map because when you can plot it out and again, I'm the generation, you know, who's you now used everything's map, you know, yeah. on paper, like my, you know, I, my son was in Boy Scouts. So I know he can use a map, but mm-hmm. the other ones like kids out there now, they, you, they give a map and say, what do I do with this? Yeah. They know the electronic maps. But again, what happens when your map breaks down? If yeah. you don't get GPS signal, you know, you're in a tunnel here or if you drop your phone, what do yeah. you, how you where do you go? Again? Yeah. Where do you go? 
Yeah. So I think for us, it would have been more efficient to plot, you know, figure out on the phone, find it there, put it, a transfer onto a map so we can now, we can now visualize it better. Okay, this is the most efficient course because we kind of were able to do that, but there was yeah. the two, three points where we figured, you know what, it would have been better to go this way than here, yeah. there, some some of the close places. We would have saved X amount of... Yeah, even you know, if it was minutes, it would... That's, yeah. You do that four or five, 20 times, that's like yeah. an hour of time you just saved on your feet, which is a yeah. good thing, you know. And it would have given us time to stop at McShorley's Ale House, as a plug for it. <laughs> yeah, right. Oldest bar in New York, you know, a place like that to stop have and have a, have a beer. beer. Yeah, which yeah. one of the, the first for place finisher, they did that. They stopped at one yeah. of the bar, they stopped at a Harvard's Bar, which yeah. is a big bar for the those folks. And they had a beer there and kept on going, but they finished in 13 hours. Yeah, which so. is crazy. I think we did like, I well, when, our, when, the, when I got the message on Instagram that said, we should be finishing uh, the event at uh, at the what was it? Astoria, Astoria Park. Park. That's it. We hit fifty miles, and we hit fifty miles, but we didn't realize that. Like we kind of took it a little easy after. Yeah, that was like eight. That was I don't know. That was, was like, like eighteen and a half hours or something. Yeah, or so, something like that, yeah, or eighteen that was, hours and ten that was minutes. Like, I think or, like three thirty or so. Three thirty yeah. in the afternoon, and then we had to get there. We had to get over the bridge you know, over the. The 2. RFK bridge, two point three miles more. Well, to more, go. yeah. But we just kind of was my apps that we're done, but we didn't realize that we're done when we check in. Yeah. With the cadre at the yeah. end. So you're not done. You've completed the fifty miles, but you haven't finished by crossing the last checkpoint. So yeah. As I said, you have to you have to sign in. You have to take your picture at this last point. So you did your fifty, but you still got to get to the last point. To, yeah, you have to still have to finish. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was a uh, that was like. Oh, more yeah. walking, but we again, know we had to get back anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then again, you're at the point when I've done it, and everything looks much rosier then. Yeah, and you know, like holy cow, we just made it through all of that. Yeah, and now all we have to do left is get to the end, get to the get to the start point, and check in and and say hi to whoever's there. Yeah. So we get in, we get we get moving, and for those of you that haven't haven't heard yet, when we started the event. They were expecting a major, major storm. Yes. Cold weather, nor'easter type storm. Yeah. And we're like, eh, maybe it'll rain, maybe it won't. So it hits nine o'clock, and that's right when it starts misting. The, yeah. The mist, the mist, then yeah. the drizzle. And then it just, it, it rained. Yeah. I mean, we hit Yankee. The first stop was the fire, uh, FDNY's uh, fire department, their academy. And it started misting there. And then, as we, then we, next stop was uh, Yankee Stadium, yeah. which was two and a little bit miles away. We got there, took the pictures there, and that's when it started. Like, all it started hell coming unleashed down. Yeah. on us. And I yes. mean, to give you an idea, I mean, we have to carry all our gear. If we, have, if we had raincoats, if we had everything. Um, I was wearing a long sleeve shirt, and I was so we're so warm. For I mean, not many people have carried weight for two hours yeah. or an hour. Yes, you get warm. I mean, it's like you're using a lot of energy. So I was pretty warm. You had like a t shirt on. Yeah, I had like a long sleeve shirt on, and I'm warm, warm, warm. And then we get finally get down along the the Hudson River. I don't know how many hours later or whatever it was, two in the morning, one in the morning. Yeah. And I think like I think that's when the nor'easter actually hit us. Like yeah. you know, it was so bad. The wet I think the temperature dropped. It felt like twenty degrees. But yeah. whatever it was. The wind was coming off the river because it comes yeah. right up right up Hudson, the and Hudson we, Bay, right up the river and hits because yeah. we we're on the west side. Yeah, and we had no, no nothing to like protect us from anything. Yeah. Just what you have on. Yeah. So it was it was brutal. Um, it kept you awake, kept me awake. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, yes. but, um, so we had weather at our, at our, <laughs> not at our advantage, at least at nighttime. And for me, you know, going through the experience with, with, you know, with you and seeing some of the other teams as we went past, it was neat seeing like, just our, like how you feel, how we look, you know, how we move like the more tired we get, like I think it was like three or four or five in the morning where like before the sun started to come up where I, I started to feel like, wow, I, I need the sun to come up. And I was, yeah. I was yelling at you and like, I need food. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, I had all these healthy, like bulletproof bars in my bag. I think I had like two or three of those. I had these yeah, had the waffle, honey the stinger stingers, waffles. Yeah, waffles. And you had, you had, you were like jerky and, yeah. and all sorts of nuts and coconut yeah. and all sorts of yeah. stuff. But it was, because it was so wet, we were not going in our packs yeah. as frequently as we probably should have. And, uh, you know, it was good that we did, but it was, it was brutal. I think we would probably, in my opinion, I would have probably ate better if it was easier for us to go here, John, just grab something out of my pack and not try to like take off the garbage bag I had as my uh, tarp yes. to cover myself, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, uh. Yeah, well, that's something you learn. Yeah, again, something by doing the events, you learn that you know, 
sometimes you feel you need food and sometimes I, you just don't want to be bothered with it because it's more pain, even though you probably could use it. Looking back on it now, like for my mental state, it probably would have a couple, some more food probably would have helped the mental state because yeah. when, you, when the blood sugar starts getting down or the ketones go down, yeah, it can become an issue with your brain function and you get a bit of brain fog. Yeah, that's and, what I didn't want. And I know, and I, ha- I did have, I did have the brain fog. I know, yeah. I, I know, I had that. Yeah, I can see it in your face when we look at the yeah. pictures. Yeah, you know, it's like you could see like your high energy in the beginning and then like mid yeah. three quarter way through, like you're like a different person, and then at yeah. the end it was back up again. Yeah, it was coming up again. Yeah. Uh, but then that's that's part of the the process of training. Like I, I, there's some training. So this is a little commercial break where a student came in, and we had to take a uh, little ten second break. So make sure you check out this episode at lifestylelocker.com forward slash star course. All right, we're back. So what were we saying? Oh, the brain fog. Uh, yeah. Food. Brain fog is one of the things that occurs with lack of sleep. Less uh, less food. Once you, uh, it's one of the things that is it's a contributing factor. Like with everything else, you get a combination of A, B, C, and D. Like for me, with the, my feet, I said early on got wet, and I could feel the blistering. I could feel it, and actually this morning I took a picture of it. And I still have the blister. Like the skin's almost ready to come off on one foot, but it's still going on there. And that some stuff like that gets into your head because you haven't spent sometimes the time. Under wet conditions, have you have you rucked under wet conditions? Have you rucked late at night? And some of the after action reports that I read, you know, this is what they're saying. Some of the guys are saying you need to train, you know, do you need to do some long stuff? You need to do stuff like at twelve o'clock, get out twelve o'clock at night, do a two even two hours then, or go out at four a.m. four to six. Mm. Just get the time because if your body's not used to those those time frames, you know, you're trying to change your whole circadian rhythm, and that's that's yeah. tough. And that it was that, nuts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know for me, and I was saying this, and it's, it's interesting because I, I was, I think I had a bunch of algae before. I think I even had one packet or two during the event. Yeah, my spirulina, and you know, it got to like that morning time, and I, and I'm not, I don't eat breakfast really ever. Yeah, you know, on a weekend sometimes I'll have breakfast, and I mean, I was like, I need food. I needed like salt. Like I, I felt that brain fog like kicking yes. my ass. Yeah, and uh. You know, I ate something very, very paleo. It was a bagel, New York City bagel. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what I borough we in. in the world. Right? New York City bagel with bacon, yeah. egg, and cheese on it. You know, not my normal MO, but. Yeah. Well, that's t- Man- yeah, Manhattan. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, for me, like, I didn't feel like crap after. Yeah. I f- actually felt like, holy cow, I'm, a, like, I'm back awake again. Like, I, yeah. that that have helped me more than that cup of coffee that we ended up getting wherever, like, in downtown Manhattan. Just yeah. because I think the fat, the salt, the everything that was just loaded in there yeah it's like the phrase you know sleep is a weapon food is a weapon you know prior planning is is basically a weapon what you use or it's a, it's a tool yeah and it's a tool and again if you don't do it again like everything else you look back on it, i said yeah i should have done that that that, that I, you know there's things you should have done yeah agreed 100 uh, like, percent. like for the food i think we had the food planned out well but <laughs> you using it i mean i had stuff still in my bag that you know, me more, too more the, the jerky the, uh, the jerky i like it's great because they have the you know dried fruit in there you know macadamia nuts brazil nuts which are, is great energy fuel i still had a bag with uh my uh, cube coconut the cube yeah. coconut the brazil nuts I, I had that still in my bag i had more of the spirulina in my pocket too a little tin with the spirulina that i yeah. didn't use and again sometimes you get into that brain fog I, that's what you, it is and you don't think of using it, even though it's, it's right there yeah yeah, I, that was for me. It was it was weird, and I and I don't think I planned and like thought out enough with food. I'm like, oh, because I did the we did I did the ultra in yeah. May, and I brought back so much food. Yes. But then again, I was running. Yes, you know, which was very different. Like I had like you know honey stinger, the uh, waffle or something which was easy to eat. It was you yes. know where I had like a I still have like I still had a pro bar like a 400 calorie pro bar in my bag. Yeah, I still have it now in my, my pack. Yeah, I've still got some of the jerky packs and yeah. uh, the paleo packs in there. Still got a couple of those that's still yeah. in, in my car. Actually, still in the rucks, bottom of the rucksack. Yeah, but I think you know, I think if we do this again next year, for me, the the nutrition, I think, is going to be a huge factor in our in our mental status as we go through the night. Because I think it's we have to, you know, I don't say trick the body because you have to, you know, you're changing. You said yeah. circadian rhythms, but if we start even noshing, like slowly through the event yes like consistently our body 
may not want to put itself into that parasympathetic, you know, parasympathetic sleep mode. Yeah. Like where you just got to just digest and rest and, yeah. you know, like it'll be like, all right, we got to use this fuel now to keep moving because we know we're, yeah. we already had, know we have hours of movement left. Yeah. And that's where the food selection comes in well. You know, you, you know, like, do you want to, you know, work on a carbs type, a t- carb feeder? Are you going to go more of a paleo type routine? Are you going to more of a keto type? Yeah. What exactly are you doing? Like I, I've done, I've, I've done Marine Corps marathon and I've done the, the whole route with the gels and all that. And it's, it didn't never really sat well with me per se. I never yeah. got sick from it, but I just, no, it's, I never like not a healthy fuel yeah. anyway. I don't think. And I finally, when I started doing more of the paleo route, I did one of the marathons with, uh, with coconut. I had the bag of coconut, you know, uh, shaved coconut. And that's, that's what, that's what I ate during the marathon. And, no food issues, no bonking issues like that. Um, you know, before that even was, you know, eggs and sweet potato and, and you know, some eggs beforehand. I had made it and brought it down with me, chilled and had that. And that was fueled. Yeah. Great for the, you know, the 26 miles. Yeah. We, well, we had that. I mean, you mentioned you were eating them right before, you know, not right before, yeah. but like yeah. late, late lunch, like four or five o'clock. Yeah. I did the same thing before I showed up. I think I had four or six eggs. Yeah. I brought six eggs, you know, I, you know, I yeah. had the pastured eggs up in, in the country and, you know, they just the flavor there, but it's the fuel, and, and yeah, I, and the, I get that. Fat. In, yeah, and I'll tell you, just my my personal experience. I think you've probably done the same. Is I eat? I shouldn't say I eat keto, right? I probably eat like a version of paleo keto, and yeah. people know Dave asked me, a paleo keto bulletproof. It's like my own whatever. Yeah. I do like a combination of of those types of foods. I try to do mostly fat most of the time, like yes. all my training up to it, mostly fat most of the time. Then it's protein and then it's carbs. My carbs, I really only tend to do in the evening. Yeah. That's, like if it's going to be a starch, it's usually sweet potato or organic white rice. That's, that's it for me. That's what I do. And, uh, and uh, so that's, it was just a, it was, it was a kind of like a screw up, but probably that I ate what I ate during the event, but yeah. I did, it didn't affect, like I actually felt energized, but I felt I was lacking a lot of the salts, the, you yes. know, the minerals. I was missing the carbohydrates that I probably plowed through the first 10 hours. Yeah. You know, I didn't refuel them. Yes. Like even like thinking like, and I don't even know if they make these, but having like, like sweet potatoes, like, like a, you've dried or something, you know. Well, you can do sweet pure, purees now and you can actually you go to a place, some of the, like a camp more, some of the camping places they have, their small silicone tubes and you can use that to make your own food. Well, like, like a puree they do is or they whatever. Your own purees or I've seen some people who like baby food. They, 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 in fact, they do now a uh, like almost like an applesauce with a protein uh, whey protein in it, uh-huh. like a little uh, a bag, and you just un, you know pop the top and just you know pop, shoot yeah. it in. I've yeah. seen that, and you can buy that, but you know that's something where you can make your own. Yeah, you know, I think that's that's something for me that I think would probably be beneficial. If, you know, for an ultra marathon for an event like this, those you know, and and I don't know if there's a way, maybe even with powdered like uh, caprylic acid with your potatoes, like puree, yeah. like so you're getting the fat. Yeah, or emulsif- you know, emulsified MCT oil. Yeah, that's exactly. You, know, like yeah. you put it in, so you yeah. have you're getting the, the you're getting that starch fuel, but you're getting yeah. the the long long burn fuel, which is all the fat, which yes. is what we want. The MCTs, and I've I've been using the MCT for a while, and I yeah. and like when I make my my coffee, I don't, I don't always do butter. I like the butter in it. Yeah, but you know, my my morning is coffee. I use this a superfood creamer that I use, uh-huh. uh, which is your coconut, like a dry yeah, coconut it's, it's or whatever. A, yeah, it's co- in fact, I have some here. I'll show it yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I have an emulsified MCT oil. I have regular MCT oil, but I don't put it in a blender. So this company I got it from, they had an emulsified. And so I just squirt that in there. Again, it's not as dense calorie-wise, but a, a teaspoon is 70 calories. Yeah. So I put two teaspoons in there. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, you got to have the carbs, da, da, da. You know, I found for my CrossFit workouts, that's what I do. Because I work out, you know, 930 in the mornings. And I go through my full workouts. I've done the open with that. And you're not eating and I food. Fueled. You're not yeah, eating not food. Eating. You're eating. You're yeah. having your your so called you know power yeah. coffee, if you will, bulletproof coffee, whatever yes. you want to call it. I'm the same way. You and know, I, I fueled myself, and I you know a lot of activities. That's that's what I do. We we actually we eat. Listen to you. We eat very very similar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know. I'm sure we do. And the same thing with me. You know, I'm up early when I'm seeing patients, and I'm up at I don't like so I'm up at five almost every morning. Yeah. And I'm usually having my my bulletproof or whatever you want to call it coffee at I in the car. So it's at like six o'clock to yeah. to seven o'clock. I'm drinking it or six to six thirty, and um, I I'm good until about two o'clock, twelve thirty one, two o'clock, depending on the day. Yeah. And if and the first thing I usually eat is something that's it's usually a salad with some kind of fat and protein. Yeah. Like that's my fuel. 
That's People like you're not hungry. That's the same thing I do here. And no. I I work out at nine thirty and my coffee. I work. I eat when I come. I get up to school here. I'll eat here because our you know, usually about one or two o'clock because it's pretty slow. We don't have many of the athletes coming in. It's slow. So again, salad. I'll show you my drawer. I've got cans of sardines. Yeah, uh, I haven't got it. Yet. I'm working on it. Sardines. The uh, the. I guess I got it from, I think, the Rob Wolf one and uh, Peter Atia. Yeah. The ones they recommend, the Wild, wild Things or Wild Planet. And yeah, Wild Planet. Great. Yeah, Wild Planet. So I, I, yeah. I get it by the case. Yeah. And I go through that. I, the the uh, oysters, you know, smoked oysters. Oh, I and can't do tuna. it, man. And I put I it right on the it's a generational thing. Man. I yeah, do I, it. I know. My father was sardines and my, you know, I, I learned to eat them from my dad and my older son. If you see it with my father, he's then put them on crackers, which drove his mother nuts. Yeah. She couldn't stand up. Yeah. yeah. I tried. I still have a jar. I bought a, I think I bought a glass jar of them. Maybe I didn't buy, what's it, sardines and what's the other ones? Anchovies? Oh, anchovies are, anchovies are very difficult. They're generally still very salty. Yeah. So but, I accidentally bought like a jar of anchovies uh, instead of sardines. If you can find, if you, if you ever want to try the Spanish, <laughs> Spanish anchovies. Spanish, Spain does a whole, Spain and Portugal have a whole different mode of seafood. Some of their best seafood is canned. Yeah. And their stuff is 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 incredible, but they have a white anchovy, mm -hmm. which is not is not that doesn't have the saltiness like the anchovies like you get on pizzas yeah, yeah. out here in New York area anyway. They're super salty, and you got to have that love that salt. The white anchovies don't have that; they're much milder. It's, uh -huh. it's a great flavor, but they usually buy it in a jar and mix with olive oil, and they're preserved in olive oil with a little bit of salt. Yeah, uh, uh, they're, those. those uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to try some of those sardines though. Uh, that yeah. I keep missing. Oh man, sardines and lemon, and with lemons or olive or smoke, whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, you can have one of each and try a taste test. Oh god, you know, <laughs> and maybe after this, right? I'll get water yeah. or something to drink at. No. <laughs> yeah, something some flavor. More, yeah, and, something uh, some of the alcohol to cut the uh, cut the oil. Okay, so so we get we do our event. We we come over the bridge. We finish. Um, normally, after like these crazy events, I'll I'm okay to do like a beer. I yeah. I know you had one. I I couldn't i couldn't even get i couldn't even like think about it. i think i had three they have like the really ultra red bananas i had like three yeah. bananas i'm yes. like oh, i felt so good i just needed something in my system your body tells you what you need yeah. it doesn't i've done it you know, after the first marathons i i don't i very rarely eat potato chips i don't eat any of that that food but i realized after the, some of the marathons and they would always give you as like a snack pack and a couple of things in it but and i was i would go for the chips that would be the first thing you eat when it's something i don't eat but I would just get that, and I realize it's my body wants needs the sodium. Salt. It's, it's telling me yeah. eat that, so it, it tells you what what you need. Yeah, uh, totally. And, uh, I said, and again, this this event was where usually I can always have a beer. I don't have an issue with it. Some of the go ruck stuff I've done, you know, twelve hours later, and at the end of it, yeah, we're cracking a beer. Yeah, and it's it's normal. It's like yes, we've have it. We know we've done this accomplished, but that's twelve hours. This with a twenty. I actually, I grabbed one and I had a couple sips and it's like, you know, and I, I just didn't want any more. And as that this was unusual, but my body was saying, no, no. You need, yeah, you need some other, other stuff. So yeah. I had one of my recovery mixes and I had that coconut water and my, my, uh, yeah. uh, Savage recovery mix and had that. And I said, my body was telling me, that's what you need. That's what you need. Yeah. It, it said so the body ha does have a wisdom. If yeah. You, if you learn to listen to it. Yeah. That's the, the, the inner voice. Yeah. Sometimes we. You know, all say, the, screw you. our smart homo <laughs> sapiens, we learned to, yeah, we say, I know what I need. And my body's saying, okay, you can do that, but you're going to feel gonna, later. I'm going to F you up later. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I tell you, if I did, if we did it again, food, I totally think I would, I mean, that's the things I would think of like, what, what's going to really hydrate the hell out of me? Yes. Like what's going to give me like that salt? What's going to give me the sweet? What's going to give me the, the stuff that we tend to crave? It's more sa sweet, uh, sour and savory is more what you're craving after a yeah. while. You don't like, you don't eat the sweet Not stuff. Not sugary, but I mean like, yeah. like the, like even if I had like a, during the event, like even some like organic dried like plantain chips or something, yes. you know, like something like that where it's a little starchy and it would like maybe some salt on it. Yeah. It, oh, like, what do they call them? Uh, in a Puerto Rican restaurant, like platano, what do they call them? Yeah, platanos. Those? Yeah, plant, platanos are sweet plantains. Yeah, but no, but they call them, they're cooked in like fried in coconut oil. Um, they, yeah. Maduros. Maduros are the Maduro, sweet Maduro's ones. Maduros are the sweet ones, and the other one's tostones. Tostones. Dad, I need the... a packet of tostones yeah. with some pink salt on it. That's not well. Even... You, I was what I was hoping for was right <laughs> one of my favorite little restaurants right by the George Washington Bridge, right by the Port Authority bus terminal. It's a little, I think it's Salvadorian, and they make sandwiches with either tostones or maduros. So they take the the plantains, either the, the starchier one or the sweeter one. 
they basically mash it up and they cook them. And then, okay, and you want to, okay, what do you want in it? They slice it in half and it's a mound. It's about, it's almost like a bagel. Very yeah. similar bagel. They slice it in half and you can have a filling, you know, pork filling, vegetarian, whatever you want inside of cheese. And, you know, they have like eight, ten different fillings. Yeah. And I had my 20 year old, I took him there, I think it was 18. And, he, and my son, you know, the urban kid who's, you know, he's been around the city and he's, I took him to it and said, Johnny, how do you like this? This is one of the best sandwiches I've ever had because he, he, and he got the the sweet one, the Maduro, which is my favorite. Yeah. But it's like, it's got the carbs, it's got meat in there for protein, it's got the fats because they cook the, you know, like the pork Early or the oil, beef, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, this is the perfect thing for it. Now, <laughs> it wasn't open when we went by it because we were, we were actually only a block away from it, but yeah. they don't open at 6 a.m. Yeah. No yeah, kidding. You need to wait a while. Sunrise. Ugh. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, like, when, when I got, and how long was your drive back home after? Like an hour? It, well, Driving wise, distance wise, it was I was probably seventeen miles away. But I drove as I left, and yeah, we'd been up for about probably about forty eight close to forty eight hours at that yeah. point. And I was driving home and I all of a sudden realized I was starting to nod off. And I actually ended up pulling off the highway at uh off the highway and I pulled over and took and had to take a nap. Really? I took like a thirty minute nap, like a power nap, which I've I've done before traveling down from Massachusetts. Yeah. Twenty minute yeah, it was actually twenty I set my alarm clock for, I think, to 30 minutes, and I woke up in 20, and I, okay. Then I continued, then I drove the other 20 minutes to get back to the house. Yeah. But my body was just, my body was about Ready done. to go. Yeah. So and if I if I kept on going, if I kept on pushing it, I did not want to have an accident. So, I, you know, discretion took the better part of valor. I didn't have to get home with a certain time frame. I didn't have a dog who wanted a, a puppy who wanted to say, where are you, where are you? Yeah, no, Maybe. for me, yeah, mine, yeah. like, I'm just, I get in the car, I'm like, all right, I'm good, I'm good. I'm like, wow, I stopped moving. Yes. I'm getting tired. Like, so I call one of my buddies uh, who's out in Utah. And I'm like, talk to him. He's like, how was the event? I'm like, I'm actually driving, you know. Yeah. I talked to him for like half the ride home. Like, three quarters of the way home, like, holy cow, I'm freaking tired. Yeah. Mine was about an yes. hour drive. Yeah. And uh, I get home. My wife invited my mother in law, my parents over. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, that made, she made a nice dinner. And uh, so I sit down, I took a, got in, took a sh- quick shower. Felt so. I wanted to stay enough for like an hour, like yeah. warm up and like, yeah. like, just, like, oh, so good. Get and I get out, have some dinner, and like, I'm just gonna sit in the couch for a minute. Yeah. You could have dropped an atomic bomb in my living room. Yeah. I would oh, not yeah. have woken up. Yes. Done. I was done. I woke up at midnight on the couch, and I, they had wine. They t- they cleaned up dinner. They sitting around you. They cleaned up dinner. Probably. You, yeah. I don't know. I didn't. There's no <laughs> selfies that are yeah, taken. Maybe not. Especially in the video tape. Yeah. yeah. But they, they cleaned up dinner, they had wine, whatever. Then my wife sat and watched some TV, like sitting next to me. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea anything was going on. I woke up at midnight on the couch, I'm like, holy cow. And I got back, yeah. I, went, I went to bed, in my bed, like, you know, three minutes out again. And I think I, you know, my, my aura ring said I slept for 12 hours straight. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It was like seven. 15 to 7 15 and i woke up again yeah i was like holy moly yeah, i i went down i got to the house and i ate a little something and i basically went let me go sit in my bed for a minute and that was nine o'clock and i just said okay i just need to let me go take it i want to go take a shower and get something else to eat, something to eat some more substantial to eat yeah. next thing i knew it was eight o'clock in the morning I, I, <laughs> I, and i was still i was i was actually half reclining my light was on i was, I was kind of half reclining half reclining in bed because uh, I was still partially <laughs> sitting up and I was, I was, I was just down. Done. Yeah. It's yeah. unbelievable, man. Yeah. I, I was, I, you know, I interviewed this guy named Dr. Michael Bruce, who's known as the sleep doctor. Mm-hmm. We're talking about sleep for like, everything. sleep's like the ultimate yeah. weapon for, for like function. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he was saying, if you, if you just close your eyes in your sleep, that means you're sleep deprived. Yeah. And I, and I, yes. that next day I'm like, well, I was yeah. sleep deprived. I'm like done. Well, again, I, I, one of my a close friend of mine, is, uh, my buddy Colin, I've mentioned a few times. He's Marine Recon, yeah. Recon Marine, and I was talking about it, and he's he's been through the lots of different places, yeah. and we were talking about it, and he he's very well familiar with all of like you know foot care, the sleeping side of it, and so happen what happen when you stop. So when you stop, and then he was able to complete my yeah. When you stop, if you sit down. You're going to, your body wants to go down. So, you know, if you put your head down, you stop, sit down and put your head down, you're going to go out. So like, you know, when they were trained is 
not just that you don't stop, but you never you never sit down. Don't put your head down. You lean against something. Keep your head up. Just because it yeah. gives you that bit of a break, then yeah. you have to keep on going, and you don't have time to tie. I think down. we did that. I think we were pretty good most, probably 90 for us, like 95, 98% yeah. of the time, like leaning on a pole for a second. Yeah. Or well, so, you know. Well, I can tell you, the last time I stopped and sat down was when I changed the socks down yeah. uh, close to Washington Square Park, right after McSorley's, like the McSorley's Ale House, I think it was. Yeah. We oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Yeah. And that's, and, you know, going back to some other stuff, that's, that's the point, that's the point I kind of decided we're going to, we're going to finish this no matter what, because this is before that. And you, you kind of figured out, I. I had some points in there. I was I, I get a, let me get Josh to where we can find another team so you can hook up with it because my feet they they go on bad, and it just got into the into my head because we we're, we're not going to finish. Like we're a, not going to yeah. finish. And we're not going to finish the time. No way. Time I wasn't letting factor. that happen. Yeah, and I said we're not going to finish the time factor. But I, I, let me get we got to get some where we can find him a team to get with, and and I can just you know whatever. And uh, it was when we sat down to change and when changing socks. It's kind of like sometimes you develop rituals, and it's like that's like one of them. Like I said, I'm not going to change my socks until. The rain has stopped because it's not going to make any sense to change them and then have them get wet again. So they might have, which I've, you yeah. know, something I've read of and heard from, from Colin, you know, and some of the techniques she used. And that's, and that's kind of the point when, okay, well, we're going to keep on going. It may not go fast, but we're going to keep on going. And, you know, it's like the head goes down, but you, you keep on moving. And so it's like, the, it's the, like the attitude, attitude yeah. change. And that's, and earlier part was like another half, actually, I was at the points, another half hour, half an hour. One more stop, one more stop, another half hour till we got to that point, and then it was like, okay, yeah, I was yelling, gonna... I wasn't being nice yelling. At you. I'm like, let's go. Yeah. Oh no, no, that's no, that's fine. You know, again, and that's where you got to know your audience. Some people you can't do that with yeah. because they they are too touchy feely. But for you know that no, that's yeah, that's just what yeah. you do that because you know you're not doing it with harmful intent. Obviously, you just need to get people moving, and sometimes it's where you got to figure yeah. out what it gets through there, gets through that wall yeah. for them to keep to keep moving. Yeah. Uh, well, when I saw you making it over the Brooklyn Bridge, yeah, I'm like, he's gonna make it. Like, yeah. <laughs> if he would have been, he would have taken a nap on the bridge. That long, yeah. we don't really have like that hill. That's a long, yeah. And again, that's another one of the routes where if we'd known better, planned better, we would have saved 20 minutes there. That was yeah. that was 20 minutes out of our way, extra time. That oh yeah, we yeah. Lot, lot, exactly. Yeah, went down another the river mile the wrong back, way. Yeah, coming back and having to go back inland. A couple blocks and yeah. yeah, there was a more direct, a very sure it was a direct route that we yeah. decided to do it the hard, the hard way. And I have some friends who you know they always comment, "Did you do it the easy way, the hard way?" No, no, I, I know you better. You did it the hard way. <laughs> yeah, and a few things I've known for years and years. We've done well this because stuff. we needed to do more mileage. I mean, that's why like fifty yeah. is like anybody could do fifty. If we do like close to sixty, like we're way better, right? If that's the standard. Then <laughs> you, might want, you want to go above? You want to go past the standard? Uh, I'll tell you what. I, 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 you know, people are like, will you do that again? When they ask me, when they, if you ask me that night or that day, I'm gonna like, nope, did it, we did it. Like you asked me today, yeah. I do it next year. Yeah, I would totally do it, but I would gear change, like my shoes. I, my boots were comfortable, but I think I would like even like you wearing a, a low, like a low. Yeah, I would even I think wear like a low, like a hiking sneaker, or hiking shoe. Yeah, versus a boot. You know, weatherproof, but so I can, if I want to, like, have a light, I don't say jog, but, like, a real good shuffle with a little yeah. more mush under my feet, I'd much rather that. Totally. Yeah. Yes, uh, definitely. And, you know, there's, and. No, I wouldn't wear my ultras. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear those, I don't think. Now, for me, they, they didn't work because my, you know, the, the foot shape for that, that kind of, for running wise, like for the North Face, uh, yeah, I, I think I probably would, w- would wear these for that. But for what we were doing, no, not that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some other people I know, I was talking about the cadre that was there. He has, you know, he's told that he has a shoe that's similar to the, to, to these, but he said, this is what he does when he does that kind of stuff. But again, a lot of, a lot of the guys in that community use the shoes I have. The, yeah. Those Solomon's. You know, Solomon's yeah. 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 They, they use that one. And then they have, you know, and they, they do a lot of those things. They're, they're big in that ultra community. Yeah. Uh, they, they worked very well. And I, for me, when I wear that again, yeah. 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 You know, I would get more, more time on my feet though, because Sometimes little things, little things can become big things yeah. when you don't suspect, it, especially when you add that. Because the whole thing is that time factor changes changes the geography of the terrain. Yeah, the, the time factor and time and time being the time you're going to be on your feet, the time and night you're doing it at, the amount of miles and the times you're doing it. Yeah, at, it changes the whole terrain. Yeah, you know the food, you know, changes the terrain. But that's that's kind of a you can do you need to eat for that twenty hours? Not as much as you think. 
Yeah. Uh, as long you as need the right things, prepare. though. Yeah, the right things. And it depends on how you prepare. Uh, you know, water, you know, a lot of things, you know, but, you know, the equipment becomes a factor, but not the most, the most important factor is being in your head. Yeah. That's, that's the most Headspace. important factor. Yes. Totally. That's, that's what me either makes it or breaks it. Yeah. Uh, and it's easy to make it break you. Yeah. If you're not careful, because only is a little warm. Yeah. Like we were talking about, uh, the guys was talking about the go rock selection. Yeah. You know, the one thing I like about the go rock events is they're, they're team events. And like we were there, everybody out there. People were, you know, we, we crossed paths with different teams and the, the group of guys we met from yeah. uh, the De- Delaware, Delaware yeah. those guys and other teams around. It's like, hey, how you doing? How you guys doing? How you holding up? Because you you recognize people. You, you know when people are doing it. You know, uh, that's one of the teams. Yeah. There's a, it's a, a more Random guys thing. and yeah. gals running around in like black. Yeah. <laughs> backpacks, <laughs> backpacks on. on. And, uh, and headlamps and whatever. four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know, and if you stop, you're trying to take care of your feet. Any one of them would stop. Hey, you okay? You, you know, you need you foot care. Do you need help with that? Yeah. It's a team. It's a team thing. So, you you, know, you get energy from the team you're doing that. Mm-hmm. The selection there, as they were telling you, it's it's a very much an individual event. And it's not that they're tr- they are trying to break you, but they're going to find the worms in the back of your head that will make you pull yourself because they want you know, this. This is the standard. This is yeah. You know, so they will they will look for the for your weak points. Yeah. And can you break through those weak points? You know. Yeah. When I you know and I, I I've said this before on, on other shows and maybe on Facebook lives, but we had uh, I was in a sauna last year or two years ago training for the 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 trail marathon the twenty four the twenty six mile. Yeah. And I'm sitting in the sauna because I started to use sauna training for endurance. Mm-hmm. And I would do intermittent, but I would stay in sometimes for 30 minutes at a clip in the sauna. Or I, that was my, I was doing my first one at 30. And I'd only do 20. And at 20, I'm like getting ready. To, you know, I'm like, all right, tap me out. I'm yeah. toast. And I was sitting with her with a guy, I believe it was a Navy SEAL or retire or whatever it was. And he goes, once she goes, when you're ready to tap out, you got 40% more. Yeah. Yes. You know, he goes, don't do it to kill yourself. He goes, there's a fine line there. He goes, but you have a lot more than you think. Yeah. Well, part of his training, when the more different types of training you do, you find out your limits. Like for me, people, I, mean, I, I, I pretty much know how much water I need. I know how much food I need because I've done so much different things yeah. you know, in my athletic athletic career, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, the training, you know, carrying stuff with weight. Because I, you know, at my age, you know, when you get in your 50s, people look at you, what, what the hell are you doing? You know, I was like, oh, should you be doing that? And I get that from the kids here. They hear stuff like, you're doing what? You know, they and I, yeah. I, you know, work 18, 22 year olds, and they can't conceive. You know, they think of twenty five year olds now as old. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, you're double. You're more than double the old. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm double the old. Jeez. Yeah, but you have to know your body and how it reacts to different things, and you know what you need, what you don't need, and you know how to pare things down to a certain extent. Um, do you pare things down because you're going to be more efficient, or are you not paring things down because you want the workload? Like for me, yeah. if I go on a hike, I'll carry stuff. I'll be heavy on a hike. Because I want the workload. Yeah. For this, I was looking to cut down as much weight as possible. Yeah. And we still had yeah. so much still freaking much. weight. Yeah. By weight, yeah. I was, I was over, I was like, I think about 35 pounds. Yeah. Because I, I still have to find a good scale to weigh that sandbag, right? Because <laughs> like I said, well, at the end of it, he weighed it, you know, he said, what do you got in there? Sandbag. He picked it up. Okay. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. You're definitely over. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely over. It's funny. I was at the gym yesterday working out and I was doing like some, I saw some guy doing these pull-ups where he used one like a towel. They threw it over the bar and he was doing pull-ups holding a towel. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's a really cool yep. thing to do. So I started doing, I was doing these pull-ups, started to do some stuff, like some, bur- whatever I was doing. And this one guy wearing a Spartan shirt comes over mm-hmm. and he's like, man, what are you training for? Yeah. I'm like, ah, uh, not much now. I don't know what I'm doing next. Training and, for life. Yeah. I'm like, this is just me. And I'm like, Spartans are pretty cool. I used to, you know, I used to, you know, compete in like Tough Mudders back, way back when. He goes, oh yeah, they're done. I've done a lot of them. And, and then and we were, got talking for a few minutes in between sets, and, and I was like, "Oh, I said this go ruck thing. This, you know, ended up being close to sixty miles." He's like, "Oh, well, you're young," and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm thirty. I'm thirty nine." He looks at me, he goes, "Oh, I'm only like a year older than you." Like, yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I know. Well, that I was like, like, "Oh, I, oh, I thought you're like twenty or something." And well, like, I'm like, no. They had a guy who did the uh, the Star Course, the Jacksonville one, and, and the guy is uh, six, I think he's he's sixty four. So I messaged him and said, dude, you know, 64 is good on you. You finished it. I think you are, as far as I know, you're the oldest. I think for New York, I think I think I was the oldest there. And now you've got it, you know, you got me by, I think, five years. So you know, good on you. I think the next one to me, I think, was 51. I think yeah. He's the one, the one yeah, the guy other guy. Yeah. yeah, so I think we were the oldest ones. And, I, you know, you, you keep on running into that. And I, I did the Asbury Park games. And, 
I remember that they had a master's group and the master's group, unfortunately, there starts at like 40 or 45. So here I am, you know, 59 and competing. And, and my partners were uh, Larry Owen at Momentum CrossFit. And he's 54. The other guy was 43. So we're... It's a big difference. When you add up the age groups, you know, we're some of the older ones. And I remember sitting there, one of the a guy came up to me. He was, we're standing there watching some of the guys compete. And he goes, uh, he looks at me, do you mind asking, how old are you? I looked at him and he's like, he looks like me, you know. Yeah, kind of a beard, gray. So let me ask my oldest. I'm 59. Oh, I'm 55. You got me. You got me beat. So I think, you know, I think you might be the oldest one here competing. <laughs> so, okay, well, that's, you know, you kind Good. of just do it. Yeah. Good. Yeah, exactly. But again, it's, you know, how long do you want to keep going? Uh, how long do you want to do stuff? Do you want to do things in your life? Yeah. And that's funny. It's cool that we, we kind of end this way because, you know, the, the fa- as we know, the fastest growing population in the world now are centenarians. Yes. Right. And, you know, kids are saying, kids that are born, I think it was after, what is it? I'm trying to think the, the numbers right. Oh, yeah. Maybe after 2005 or something like that. Life's, the, lifespan is going down. Yeah, starting to go yeah. down. Um, but I think they said if you're born after 2003, I don't remember the range or sub, whatever it was, you have the potential. They said like 120 is, not a, is like kind of a norm. Yeah. But then it's like the young, the generation is out now, like these 10, 12, 13-year-olds are saying they're going to not outlive their parents. Yeah. Which is nuts. Yeah. Which is nuts, absolutely nuts. But we'll talk about the positive side here is that, yeah, why you mentioned in the beginning, strength is important, like to do everything, to get out of a freaking chair. You know what I mean? Like, it's like we don't think about this, but how many people do we know that, you know, that are, that we'll call seniors, right? Yeah. And it could be 65. It doesn't even need to be 80, 90. Like, these people have, you need to use two hands on the side of a chair. To push themselves out of a chair, yes. walking up ten flights of stair or ten flights, ten stairs, yeah, they're breaking a sweat. Yeah, you know that's not good. And I see, you know, forty year olds are you know doing that. They can't, you know, two yeah, flights, exactly. They're and they're having issues, and and even younger. Yeah, you know, you, you, you see it all the time. And I know with even you know my younger, uh, my oldest is he's now fifteen. You know, and they're doing stuff, and I'm trying to, you know. I'm not trying to get in on their training because they, you know, the kids have to go to him. Like an older son, he does it with a team up here at the college, but he doesn't love it. He doesn't see the things of it, the benefits of it yet. So yeah. I'm just trying to, you know, live. It's, it's kind of like if you live the lifestyle, like I want for my kids to get involved with it, but they have to go to it themselves. Like their mother is not. Yeah. You know, she's, and she still, you know, actually I told her the next day I was talking to her, you know, about seeing the, you know, the kids and said, I said, yeah, I had to get tough because my body's really sore. What What did you do now? Well, I did a, you know, I did the 50 miles. You know, we did like 50 miles. And it's like, you did what? Again, like, man, you know, he it's, it's, it doesn't quite see the point of it. Yeah. You know, why, you know, why are you doing that? Yeah. And I get that from these guys, the kids here at the college too. It's like, why you do that kind well, of yeah. stuff? Well, yeah, I could tell you in my practice that, with, we see a good, a good amount of people and a lot of them are very athletic. A lot of people, you know, are aspiring to become more fit, we'll say, and yeah. healthy. That's why they're seeing us. But they like, you know, they saw me training. I brought my rucksack in the last week. Oh, yeah. And the, and they knew I'm training for some crazy 50 mile thing. Like, wait, you're carrying that? Why? Yeah. Why? Like that every, I think I got that word why asked. I couldn't think of a good answer. Like, why not is really. That's. That's what I've done for yeah. all the, because I've done a lot, you know, from camping and, you know, ice climbing and all the different things I've done. I, I, same thing. I get them people I know. It's like, why? And it is, is, why not do it? If you can, you know, how long do you want to be able to do stuff like this? You know, you, you want to be able to do it as long. Yeah. A friend, one of my best friends, he met a guy, met a guy, knows a guy, this guy, Jerry, lives in New York City, 95 years old. Yeah. He, uh. They had a ski condo. His brother-in-law had a ski condo, and Jerry lived next to his brother-in-law, so he got introduced to him and met him. Jerry's retired stockbroker, Wall Street. He was there till he worked till like he retired in the seventies. Yeah, he's was a world-class starboat racer. Starboat is like a I think a nineteen-foot sailboat. Okay, and it's like those. It's, it's Olympic. They race him in the Olympics. Okay, and the guy's been all over the world. He knows people. I mean, when he drops, he doesn't drop names. He says, "Yeah, I met this one, this one, this one," and it's not that he's dropping. He he actually. Yeah, he's talking about Ted Turner. And he used to he used to tow his starboat up to Connecticut in his he had a Carmen Ghia, which is a little uh, yeah. sports car. <laughs> and he's talked about, yeah, Ted Turner used to tow his behind his Ferrari. And I said, huh? He said, yeah. And, and he pulls out an, a, a, a newspaper clipping with him and Ted Turner at this event. And they're, you know, they're sitting there chatting and then that. But here's a guy, 95 years old, and I went 
last summer, actually this summer, early summer, I went with him. We drove up to the yacht club in New Haven, Connecticut, to get out to get his boat ready for to go in the water. In ninety five. Ninety five. He still bikes. He lives on a. He actually lives close to your office. He lives on like Seventy Second Street, yeah, like yeah. two blocks in from Central Park. He has a bicycle. He still bikes around. And people who live in that area, and I know somebody who lived there, and she said, "Yeah, I actually I, I remember a guy, an older guy, and he was there for years." He bikes around Central Park. He bikes down downtown, and he bikes on it. He doesn't ski anymore. Yeah. Because said, you know, now I'm 95. Yeah, he can't really ski now, but he's, he'll still go up. He'll drive up to Vermont, you know, hang out there with his, you know, the friends are, his, they're millionaires, so they own a couple condos. Hey, Jerry, come on up. So they'll invite him up. But here is 95 years old, still sailing. You yeah. know, he needs some help. But, you know, I had to get on the sailboat to help do some stuff. And he, he he's, he's stepping up on the, the wheel of the trailer. I'm helping him get into get into the cockpit to sit there. And he's telling me what to do. Because <laughs> at, at 59, I'm the, I'm the muscle. He's the brains. <laughs> and so that's that's what you want. Yeah. That's no, what you agreed. want to be doing. Agreed. And that's a, that's a good note to end on, man. We got a, got a long life to live. And if we don't live it, who someone else will. Yeah, my friends like you, we can do this kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Shall we say stuff for many more years to come? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Agreed. That's what I'm thinking of the next crazy thing. But I'm going to yeah. put this out to everybody that's listening. I know we've this is a long episode, so if you have to listen to it, you know, over a couple a couple uh road trips or a couple commutes. We're going to do this event next year. So if you were interested, you know how to connect with me whether it's through social media, probably the best way, or my email, which is on the site on our website. And on Instagram, connect with me. If we we don't mind having a, a nice team to do this with, but we're probably going to do New York City again, as my guess. Yeah, it's an easier yes. place for us to go. So yeah, you're all yeah. invited. Oh yeah, and and teams again. Part of the the event is it's a team aspect. Uh, the meeting people and way people people pull you forward. Yeah, you know people, exactly. They pull you forward, and for me, finishing it, you know, doing this, you know. Josh, he pulled. He did pull me forward, till I got that. You know, I I didn't gonna go. He, yeah. he pulled me forward through. He threw, he pulled me through that that low part. Yeah. I said I, I was gonna quit. It was. I said I was at half hour more, half hour more, half hour more, and I had a yeah. couple of those strung together. Hey, we did it, man. Yeah, we did it. That's yeah. all counts. Yeah, that's all counts. Team, it's team, good. baby. Team, human powered. Make sure you connect with me on lifestylelocker.com forward slash star course. And that rustling in the background is Gunner running around with the squeaky toy. So make sure you find us there. Find us on instagram.com forward slash Dr. Josh Hand, facebook.com forward slash lifestyle locker. And new to us, LinkedIn at linkedin.com forward slash Dr. Josh Hand. All right, y'all. Peace out. <laughs>